Welcome back to the No Idea channel. Today we're starting our build of our go-kart dyno. We're going to break the video up a little bit today uh, into a few sections. We're going to look at what a dyno is and how it works. Then we're going to have a look at some of the components that we've either made or bought for our own dyno before bolting it all on uh, and starting the build of our dyno onto one of our carts. Let's start with the simplest question. What is a dyno? Well, all a dyno is, is a way of making a load that an engine has to act against. By acting against that load, we can measure torque, which can then be converted into horsepower. It's essentially a great tuning tool, and the load just simulates you essentially driving that car down the road. Behind me here is an example of a chassis dyno that you might see uh, on full-size cars. These things are now capable of measuring multiple thousands of horsepower which is obviously going to be a fair bit too big for us. So the next thing we're going to look at is how are we going to take the technology of a dyno and scale it down for something that we can use for go-karts. Okay, it's probably important to preface this by saying I'm not an engineer, I have no engineering background. However, I do have a phone, I do have a laptop, therefore I can Google things, which pretty much makes me an engineer. Having said that, when I get some things wrong, which will inevitably happen in this video, feel free to mention, uh, put it in the comments, tell me what I've got wrong. I'm happy to learn, that's what I'm here for. So, onto the Googling. Here's where we started uh, with Cletus McFarlane having a look at a full-size vehicle. Uh, you can see here, the tyres go onto the rollers. That's how we're measuring the uh, torque of this particular engine. Way too big for our setup with a go-kart. So let's have a look at some more typical things. Here's what I found. Small engines have been running dynos like this for years. This is one type of a dyno called an inertia dyno or an inertia wheel dyno. Really like the look of this because it's simple. All it's doing is having an engine, which in this case would be our go-kart engine. Um, that looks like a small four-stroke engine of some description turning a big metal wheel. So the idea is you can make some judgments about horsepower based purely on how fast an engine can turn that wheel. Simple, really good. What we looked at first, um, but there are some restrictions. Obviously the higher horsepower an engine gets, the bigger that wheel has to be. And considering that wheel is going to be rotating around at some ungodly speed, if it's not correctly made, um, that's going to explode and kill everyone in your family, your relations, your best mate, your dog, your cat, whoever it may be. So probably not a good idea for mugs like us to be playing around with that. Let's have a look at the next setup. Alright, this is getting a bit more like it. Here we've got a go-kart sitting on rollers. It's like a mini a version of the uh, car example we saw at the start. These versions go away from using a inertia wheel and put a load on the engine by either using a hydraulic circuit or a water brake. So it's still something that the engine has to work against and then the torque is worked out by how much work the engine has to do against that water or hydraulic fluid. That's probably the way we're going to go. Uh, so we need to now scratch our heads and come up with a design. Our dyno is going to have some unique parameters when it comes to building it. Like everybody else, we want a dyno that's accurate enough that we can see changes in torque and horsepower by making adjustments to the engine. In our case, simple adjustments like jetting of the carburetor, uh, the length of the exhaust header, and the type of spark plug are very simple things that we want to test and try and get to optimise for our setup. However, for our setup we've got a couple of extra problems. Number one, we don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. Set up like that, multiple thousands of dollars, probably into the tens. Okay, so we don't want to spend that much money because we're no idea and we don't spend money. Uh, constraint number two, we want something that is portable. If we looked at this dyno, Having to move that around between workshops is going to be really, really difficult because the bed that the roller sits on is very large uh, and the other components are going to be quite large as well. We also want something that's quick to use. 
an engine dyno, like in the previous photo, simple and small, but you have to remove your engine off of your car every time you want to run the dyno. So we don't want that. We want something that's cheap, something that's portable, something that's accurate, and something that's fast to set up. Yeah. That's starting to sound like a pretty tall order. Back to the Google. Okay. So after some more Google, here's what I came up with, a really basic uh, schematic of how our dyno is going to work. Very few parts, um, to keep it simple. Our dyno is going to start with a hydraulic pump. Now the hydraulic pump is ran by the motor of the go-kart. All it's doing is rotating hydraulic fluid through a circuit. Okay, so it's going up out of here, past the red arrow, to the fluid reservoir, back down, back to the pump. So it's just a circuit. Even without adding anything else, that's going to put some load on the engine. It takes some horsepower to move that fluid around. But we want to be able to increase the load to a specific amount. So that's where this comes in. We're going to use a valve, uh, probably a needle valve, to put some load, some further load on this pump and increase the pressure in this line. So this line, the red line, or with the red arrow, is going to be the high pressure line. After the valve, the pressure's off, the fluid goes back into the fluid reservoir and is drawn back to the pump and it continues going round and round and round. Theoretically then, we can vary the load as much as we like from nothing or very close to nothing through to a quite high load purely just by screwing this valve in or out. Pretty simple. Because the simplest answer is not always the best and we like making things hard for ourselves, here's our second diagram of what our dyno is going to look like and we've added some more components. The first one is a ball valve here. This will add, act as essentially a relief. Uh, so if we need to, we can set the needle valve to a set restriction, therefore setting a standardized load here. And we can relieve that pressure if, for example, we want the engine to run with no load for a moment to warm up or something like that uh, in between back-to-back -back testing. Second thing we've added is a gauge. Uh, this is just a pressure gauge for this high pressure line. In some basic dynos, uh, people use a gauge like this uh, to help them with some estimates of horsepower. Uh, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to use our onboard computers already on our go-karts uh, to help us with the horsepower reading. Okay, now we think we know what we're doing. Let's have a look at some of the components uh, that we've managed to buy and make. Uh, to help us put our version of a cart dyno together. Uh, first off, we've got ourselves a beer keg. Uh, I think they're about 60 litres. Um, they're great because you can weld hydraulic fittings to them, so it should prevent any leaks. Also, big enough that hopefully the fluid won't get too hot too quick, because as um, hydraulic fluid gets hotter, the, the um, viscosity changes and can cause some issues with repeatability and testing. Uh, found that one for free, uh, had the fittings welded on by the guys at SRF. Uh, pump, so this is can be a quite costly part of the system. Uh, so what you do is you jump on eBay and you look for the cheapest thing China has to offer. May or may not come back to bite us, but we'll see. This pump is about 30 revolutions per minute. Uh, so... By the calculations we've done, it should be fine for the horsepower we're hoping to, to look at uh, and the load we want to produce. Uh, by using that, we also need a way, obviously, to uh, hook our pump up to the go-kart or to the engine. We've decided that the simplest way and quickest way is coupling it directly to the axle. Uh, so this coupler is, this is half of the coupler. Uh, this is the other half of the coupler that we've had to make. So we started with uh, normal old 50 mil uh, rear wheel hub, uh, removed the studs, and then in a lathe machined the top so that we could fit the second half of the coupling 
sentry that sits on there. The two go together. It's got a little bit of a shock absorber in the couple, uh, coupling too, which should hopefully help us. Uh, along with that, we've got an example of a needle valve. Uh, it's basically just a tap. Uh, the more you screw it in, the smaller the hole gets and the more restriction, which makes more load. Um, we'll see how that goes. We might need a slightly larger one. Uh, we've got an example of the hose we're using. This is going to be our feed to the pump. We don't have any of the high pressure ones yet. Uh, over here, these are the axle stands. Obviously, because we're hooking directly to the axle, it means the cart needs to be off its wheels. Um, so we've made these axle stands. Uh, five mil plasma cut plate. Uh, if you're looking for CNC plasma cutting, SRF in Katanning is a really good service. Uh, and also we've kept these as cheap as possible by using go-kart bearing carriers. And they work in the normal case, so they should be fine uh, on the dyno because all they're doing is supporting the axle in the way they normally would. So we've got those. Uh, the last thing is how we work out the horsepower um, by measuring torque. In a lot of do-it-yourself dynos, people are using Adreno boards. Um, they're making custom interfaces for sensors so that they can then log the value of sensors on computers to give themselves a essentially a torque readout or a torque graph. Uh, we're lucky enough that because we're using the Micron 5, it already has a lot of that functionality. It already records RPM. It already records um, the axle speed. Uh, it already records, uh, in our case, air fuel ratio, coolant temperature, uh, the temperature of the air. So it's got a lot of functionality already. Um, and it also has software on your computer that you can transfer the data from your go-kart to um, and break it down into some graphs, uh, even a way an engine analysis, which breaks it down into essentially a horsepower and a torque graph. So we'll look more at that once we get it started, but that's costing us zero because it's all already on the cart uh, and we're just using the extra functionality that exists. So that's our breakdown there, our parts. The next thing is going to be uh, how portable and how quick it is to set up. So let's jump in the shed, bolt it up to a cart and see if it ticks the box of being simple, portable and quick to set up. Okay, I'm out in the workshop. Uh, I've got my timer. This is my TAG125 cart, which we're going to try and put the dyno components on. Uh, we'll time it. This is the first time I've ever done it. And we'll just see how long it takes and see if it really is uh, a solution that's going to be portable uh, and quick to set up. So let's give it a go. on our stands because of the rotation of the pump uh, the measuring side is actually going to be on the brake side of the car so we can first stick on our engine side stand and let's have a look at our brake side okay so we'll slide that on Back on with the keyway, because uh, once again this is where our pump's mounting up, so we need to make sure that the axle isn't going to spin. We'll then take our uh, rear wheel hub from the coupler, Let's slide that on. Uh, 
tightening bolt on your uh, wheel hub. We'll then grab our pump. Now our pump should just slide straight onto the coupling. And once it's on the coupling, we'll bolt it to its mount. So it's just two bolts. Not on each side. Okay, so at that stage, uh, the cart should be right to go on the ground. Haven't done this before either. I'd prefer if I had another person, but I don't, so we'll try the old tip it off the back method and see how that goes. Components are mounted, even for my first time, just on five minutes, that's probably not too bad. So a quick walk around, let's have a look. As we can see, the coupling here is connecting the pump to the axle. One stand on each side of the cart. Just a stand by itself on this side. And the cart's sitting essentially as it would if the wheels were on. Once again, a reminder that our data acquisition is actually going to come from this. Um, you see our Micron 5, which is already recording all the things I talked about before. So there you have it, guys. First attempt or first uh, part of the dyno build. Uh, I think we're on to something. It's ticking the boxes so far. It's very cheap. Uh, it's very portable. It's very quick to set up. Uh, so it looks like it could be a solution for us. Uh, stay tuned as we get a few more of the parts. We'll put it together and hopefully have it ready for a test run uh, in part two of the dyno build. Thanks again for watching. Uh, like I always say, please make sure if you do enjoy the content, please subscribe. Um, please hit the like. It just helps us know if we're making the right thing in terms of content for you guys or not. Um, until then, everyone stay safe uh, and we'll see you later.